This is News 5 Sports with Jake Gaten. Yes, and the Broncos switching up training camp today. Instead of hosting it in Dove Valley, they had it here at Mile High Stadium, trying to replicate what things might be like on Sundays during the regular season. Usually on Saturdays during the fall, I'd be standing on the 50-yard line on top of the Air Force logo, but tonight is a different story. As the saying goes, bigger is always better, and the NHL dreaming big for this year's stadium series, transforming Falcon Stadium into this, an NHL arena. As rookie offensive lineman Dalton Reisner put it, Sunday's game was a game for the rookies. QB Brandon Allen getting his first NFL start under center. Malone went on to add that this game will not dictate their season, a win or a loss. They're still taking this season one game at a time, which will include the New York Knicks on Thursday when they start their East Coast swing. The good news, though, the Broncos have found their QB of the future in their Christmas stocking as Drew Locke next week will try to go to 4-1 and one as the Broncos signal caller. I am joined by the MVP of the 3A state title game, Luke McAllister from Palmer Ridge. Back to back to back, man. How do you guys do it every single year? Colorado Buffs junior wide receiver LaVisca Chenault is a downright beast. In his sophomore year, Chenault had 86 catches, which ranked 13 nationally and number one in the Pac-12. He had 1,011 receiving yards, which was 34th nationally and 4th best in the Pac-12, and caught six touchdowns, which was 8th best in the Pac-12. So it makes total sense that the Texas native has been tapped a legitimate All-American candidate and is on the preseason watch list for the nation's top player, top receiver, and most versatile player to name a few. But the real question is, how do you stop an unstoppable force? Well, the Air Force Falcon football team has to do just that this week and are up for the challenge. The actual NL West standings, Colorado eight games below 500, 19 and a half games back of the Dodgers who've been in first place for a while now. And as for the NL wild card spot, yeah, that's a thing of the past. Let's check this out, right? Colorado, seven games back at that second wild card spot. No shot of actually making the playoffs as it stands right now. December 21st, for example, has been dubbed his coming out party. But there's four seconds left on the clock. I'm wide open. I slide up to his vision, catch it. I look at the clock, which is weird. You don't look at the clock before when you catch the ball because it's going to throw your rhythm off. But I look at the clock. Felt good as soon as it left my hand and knocked it down and right at the buzzer. My teammates stormed me and it was just a great moment. Thanks, Andy. One of four siblings, Schaefer Reichardt has had a basketball in his hand since he was in the second grade. His mom even jokes he loves dribbling in the kitchen all the time. Yet this past year has been nothing short of a miracle for the high schooler as this fighting Spartan was fighting for his life. What makes him an abnormal teenager is all through middle school and even high school, he's the guy waking me up at 5.30 in the morning to go to the Y to shoot. If you wanted to tell a story about Schaefer Reichart, it would start here, in Doherty High's gymnasium. And on game days, he can light up any scoreboard. But go back a year ago, and this would have never been close to a reality. Should you be alive right now? No, I, I shouldn't. Yeah. Like middle of January and I got the flu for about a week and then I was I was better and I played a game and I was you know like okay I'm over it and then it just hit me like a wall. As we first reported a year ago, Schaefer Reichart was in the hospital clinging to his young life. I laid on his chest at first and and I said you fight. You, know, you fight, you fight, to come shaker. back to me, yeah, to shave. And then I ran over to that other room and uh, I just fell apart. The then 16 year old was suffering from toxic shock syndrome, a condition that causes a release of toxins into your body. For Schaefer, the syndrome had attacked his heart, kidneys and lungs. All of this brought on by a combination of influenza A and strep throat. And he's sedated and all these tubes are everywhere and they're, it, it just, it was awful. It was completely awful. It was like, I was on a lot of morphine and stuff and so I wasn't really sure how bad it was and I didn't even know I was unconscious for a week. At that point it was like, I just wanted to, you know, just live and you know, it wasn't like what I play basketball again, it was just what I, you know, live, so. The initial prognosis was not good. I wasn't gonna give up and I was just like, I'm, I'm gonna do it. And with that spirit, things at Children's Hospital in Aurora took a turn for the better. Still in the hospital, I started dribbling and stuff, and 
Just, yeah, just trying the to get somewhere. The drove the nurses nuts, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and after 45 days at the hospital. Hey, where are you going? The brother of four siblings was finally heading home. I think his parents say it all the time. We want Schaefer to play basketball, but we just want Schaefer. And you know, his family's basketball family felt the same way. We would love for him to be back. You know, however, we just want him back. Fast forward to today. <laughs> Reichardt is back in the game. The junior is back at school playing basketball and leading the Spartans in scoring this season, as if he hadn't missed a shot. You know, I had a lot of conversations, you know, would he ever play again? And now you're thinking, I mean, quality of life, like beyond basketball. And to think that a year later, you know, the process that he's taken and how hard he's had to work through recovery to get to score double digits in a game against some of the best players in Colorado, it really is an amazing thing. The other brothers joke that if any of the other three were in that situation, they all say they had been done. <laughs> so if you're looking for Schaefer today, you can still find him and his family right here in the Doherty High gym, but this time with a different story to tell. I'm not taking anything for granted because you know, I'll, be, I'll be over in a second. He's just a kid that wants to play basketball and wants to, you know, enjoy the game. Just an incredible story, Andy. Now, Love Schaefer is now only a junior, hopes to play college basketball somewhere. Due to his injury, though, his lungs still only at 80%, but as you saw in that story, nothing's really going to stop that kid from getting to his goal. His family also wanted me to share that they're so thankful to the Colorado Springs community that has shown their family so much love this past year. As the old coaching saying goes, if you practice on Thanksgiving, your team is probably pretty good. Today, the same applies to two Colorado Springs high school football teams taking on the annual Thanksgiving tradition. Being thankful for the things that you've been given. Football, food, One, two, three, turkey. and family. It's a blessing. You tell me? I'm thankful. A perfect play call for Thanksgiving Day. But on Thursday, five Southern Colorado high school football teams called an audible, bearing the wintry conditions to practice for their upcoming playoff games. There's not many teams that practice on Thanksgiving, you know, so if you're one of the final four remaining to practice on Thanksgiving, then you got to be pretty good, I'll say. Yeah. Two of those teams include the Palmer Ridge Bears and the Pine Creek Eagles. You know, it's almost become a tradition to practice on Thanksgiving here at Palmer Ridge. It's a great thing, you know, to be surrounded by the friends and uh, really family and relationships that you've made and on a, such a special date and get out here and do what you love, it's nothing like it. Now these two rivals can't agree on much, but can admit they both want to see themselves advance to the state finals game. In the end, we just want to get, you know, seven more days with our team. As for the most important question on Thanksgiving. So what's the thing you're going for first at the Thanksgiving meal today? Oh, you know, I'm a big turkey guy. Some stuffing. Turkey. Easy? Easy. What's better, stuffing the quarterback or eating stuff? Stuffing the quarterback, 10 times out of 10. So even on the day of giving, the Eagles and the Bears still have their eyes on the prize. You know, we're playing for a semifinal game. Hopefully we can get back in the state championship for a third year in a row. And speaking of those playoff games, we have four on Saturday. We start with the eight-man state championships as Fowler takes on Schwedwick County in Fowler. Both teams undefeated on the season in 3A. Palmer Ridge taking on Green Mountain, while Pueblo South will face Frederick. Both games will be played in the Denver metro area. And finally in 4A, we got a good one. Pine Creek taking on Pueblo West right here in the Springs at D20 Stadium. Kickoff is set for 1 p.m.